All right then guys, now that we have talked about most basic directives, I want to quickly show you the syntax of loops. And for the people that are new to coding or haven't done it in a while, you can see a loop as a coding structure that will constantly repeat a sentence or instruction until a condition has been met. And that condition has been provided by us. So we have a couple loops. Let me get rid of the switch and the comments. We have the for loop. We have the for each loop. We have the for else loop. And we have the while loop. And let's start off with the for loop. So let's say add four. And let's close it off and four. Now inside the parentheses, we need to add three parameters. The first one is the initialization, which is used to initialize the counter variable. So in our case, let's say a variable i is equal to zero. And we also need to close it off with a semicolon. Then we got the condition, which is the evaluation. If this is true, the loop will continue. And if it's false, the loop will end. So let's say variable i is less than 10. So it will loop until variable i is less than 10. Well, right now, variable i is equal to zero and will be equal to zero every single time. So we need to add one more param, which will update the loop counter with a new value. So let's say variable i plus plus, because I want to let it increase with one every single time. So inside our loop, let's create an h2. I don't know why my syntax doesn't work, which says the number is and what I want to do is to print out the variable name so curly braces variable i let's save it let's hop back to google chrome refresh the page and the number zero until nine has been printed out well right now the starting point is zero but the last number is nine let's set that equal to ten so what we need to do is to loop until variable i is less than or equal to ten so let's save it uh, back to Chrome, and the number 10 has been printed out as well. And this is basically it for the for loop. Now for the second loop, which is the for each loop, we need to have an array because it iterates over array elements. So let's go to our pages controller. Let's change name to names, and let's get rid of John. Sorry, John. Let's create brackets because it needs to be an array. Let's add names. So we have John. John's back, we have Michael, we have David, and we have Jessica. All right, we need to return a new view, but let's get rid of the width method. And inside our view method, let's add a comma, brackets, and let's pass in names as variable names. All right, let's save it. Let's hop to our about page, and let's create the for each loop. Let's write down for each, and you can see a collection as one single item. Now, what does this mean? We have the collection, which is the first param, and that is basically the entire array that we want to loop through. So in our case, it's names. Now we have the keyword s, because we don't want to print out the entire array, but the specific element s, well, right now it's called item, but let's change it to name. So we have our entire array called names, but we want to loop through it and print it out as one single name. So let's do that. Let's create an h2. Let's say the name is variable name. All right, let's save it. Let's refresh the browser. And the name is John, Michael, David, and Jessica have been all printed out. We also have the for else loop. And this is not a loop that you have seen in PHP or well, most programming languages. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's write down for else because this works on an array as well. Let's say add for else parentheses and let's close it and for else. The idea behind it is pretty much the same as the for each loop, but the for else loop has a built in code that will do a compile check for an empty input. So we want to loop through variable names as one single name. If it can be done, let's create an h2 which says the name is variable name. But what if it isn't? So let's say that variable names is empty. Well, after the h2, we could create something which is called at empty. So let's say h2, there are no names. Let's test it out. Let's save it. Let's go back to Chrome. 
Let's refresh it. And you can see that John, Michael, David, and Jessica have been printed out just as the for each loop. But if we go back to Visual Studio Code, and let's go to the pages controller, and let's get rid of all the names inside our names variable. Let's save it. Let's go back to Chrome. Let's refresh it. And the empty directive has been printed out right here. All right, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's return our names because I don't want to get rid of John, Michael, David, and Jessica because we only have one loop left, which is the while loop. And the while loop is mostly used to evaluate expressions inside the parentheses. So let's say at while. For this, we can work with the array. So let's create a variable called i and let's set it equal to zero. This is, by the way, not the way to create variables in your views, but let's do it for now. While variable i is less than 10, is to basically print out variable i. Now, if we save it right now, it will create an infinite loop because we are never increasing variable i, which is actually a problem because our application will crash. So what we need to do in a while loop is to always increase it with something. Variable i plus plus. Let's save it. Let's hop back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh the page. Oh, I made a typo right here. My bad. H2 needs to be variable i. So let's save it. Refresh the page. And this is a duplicate. But, well, you get the point. 